So you ordered the six plates all by yourself? Yes, I do this every Monday. It's a good start to the week. We're looking for the very best markets in Europe. Our first stop, Provence, in the south of France. The region has almost 300 days of sunshine a year, so it's the kind of climate that gives you olive oil, fields of lavender, rosé, maybe every day, and what seems like every fruit and vegetable under the sun. It's also somewhere you can still find true farmer's markets. To show us exactly what to look for when in Provence, we're meeting chefs Lise Kvan and Eric Montillon. They spent a year road tripping through France to meet local farmers and artisans, and now they've chosen to settle in Provence to set up their first restaurant, taking over the historical Le saint Hubert. Together, we're going to visit their favorite traders at one of their local markets in a town called Apt. So, to market, we go. Do you ever get used to this? No. Every morning I wake up, I'm so thankful that we found this space. I feel very lucky to call it mine. And so what are we looking out at right here? So we are looking at the Lubran Massif, that large mountain range in the farthest distance. Mm -hmm. And past those mountains, you've got X and then Marseille and the Mediterranean Sea. All here. <laughs> the beautiful south of France. I'm preparing the swordfish. We sear the swordfish. We have a little sweet onion confit, some capers, some tomatoes with shallots, a bit of salt and mint. And this is a fantastic olive oil from Xavier Lazar in the Vaud Provence. To me, it's what makes the dish mostly. This is actually uh, a dish that I ate uh, in Sicily once. And when the plate arrived, I was a bit like, eh, okay, not much work on that. And this was the best. And this also like little by little, how I started to just focus on the product. If you have good products, you just put salt and pepper, you're done. Yeah, it's very easy, guys. Buy good stuff. Be a bit generous. The swordfish same is just seared very quickly because you don't want to dry it. And you finish also by pepper because pepper and swordfish works well. And voila, simple. Bon appétit. Come on, frankly. Yeah. Voila. Mm. 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 It was pleasure. Yeah. As foreigners, we all have this idea of Provence. How does the rest of France see the region? Uh, I'm not sure, but everybody would tell you, like, slow. Take it slow in the morning, slower in the afternoon, and don't do much at night. Leave the moment, and they will tell you they all come in the area because it's fantastic, pretty, and sunny. Mm. And again, good food. How would you describe the food from Provence itself? Provencal cooking is at its base very resourceful and very mindful of all of the economic restrictions that they had, and the fact that they have really incredible produce because of the sun and therefore just using things that they were able to grow readily and not wasting anything. What are the products in this region that most excited you when you first came? Cheese. <laughs> the apricots. Mm. How soon after moving did you seek out the markets here? Four or five months before we even moved here. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't that big too. A lot of them don't work with restaurants. It's a major courtship process and it's very much about who you are as a person and not who you are as a business. How would you encourage the average person to involve themselves more in that? If you think it's cheaper in a supermarket, honestly, you're wrong. Follow the seasons and go to the market. You're more aware of the prices of things because you can do different stands. Buy strawberry in winter. They're very expensive. They never saw the sun. And they're not very good, I'm sorry. They're tasteless. Have tomatoes in the winter? Why? Buy them in the summer, end of the season. They're gonna sell it for cheap, they're ripe. To get the cream of the crop, if you'll pardon the pun, you've gotta to get to the market bright and early. Provence clearly had the bright part covered, but for us, it took a few cafe au lait's first. But look at the site. This is the weekly farmer's market in nearby Apt. Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Ça pousse. <laughs> ça pousse, exactement. These herbs look brilliant. So, so beautiful. I've never yeah, actually well, seen white eggplants before. It's exactly the same, only they're more sweet and more 
I particularly Oops. like roasting them. And I'm seeing more tomatoes here than I've seen this year, probably. What are all the different kinds? Hola, tomata nanas. Pineapple tomato. Is that because of the color there, that yellow that's coming through? Mm -hmm, exactly. Mm -hmm. And a little bit because of the flavor too, it's very sweet. Wow. So magnifique, celle-là. Quand on prend une tomate comme ça, là, c'est vrai que ça, c'est magnifique. How would you use these ones? Moi, elle est en salade. Pour les apprécier, les tomates, pour moi, le mieux, c'est en salade. The earth's already cooked it for you. Just eat it raw. Just eat it raw. Par exemple. Well, he's going to show you something. Oh, yeah, that's the black cherry. Yeah, I know this. It's so sweet. It's like and candy. It's like a little bit of Is there a particular crop he's really most proud of? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Such a different experience to going and picking up some some tomatoes in a supermarket aisle. So, and, and so much more flavor, so much more history. Yeah. It's magic. Yeah, it is magic. I've never seen zucchini flowers quite so big. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful, they're huge. And will you fry them or what are you gonna what are you gonna do for us? I'm going to serve them raw. Oh, I've never had them raw. As a salad or yeah. Right. So separating the zucchini on the bottom from the leaves? Exactly. Will be a, a necessary lesson in my zucchini education. Because usually I just stuff them with mozzarella, anchovies, batter them and fry them. But for me it's, it's kind of a shame to fry something. Right. That's so stunning already. Here we go. It's like sun in a bag. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not all fruit and vegetables at this market. You really can't leave Provence without an obligatory glass or five of rosé. According to Lise, the drink owes its popularity thanks to a photo of Bridget Bardot's shot sipping the wine in the area back in the day. And who am I to say no to an early morning tasting? Especially since it met meeting Léa, an award-winning winemaker whose wines Lise stocks at Les saint Hubert. So, du coup, est-ce que tu peux nous présenter un petit peu tes vins? Alors déjà le domaine c'est un petit domaine de 3 hectares, c'est euh, donc une toute petite production, 3500 de rosé, 3500 de rouge et 1000 de blanc. Et en fait je le fais le plus naturellement possible sans mettre un vin naturel. Last time we spoke, she told me, you better hurry up with your order because I have very limited stock. And so I said, okay, put five, six cartons on the side for me because I take all of them. Yes. <laughs> Would you describe the wines as typically Provençal? Oh, je pense surtout le rosé, avec cette période. C'est vrai que c'est un rosé qui est assez... C'est pas uniquement le rosé d'apéritif. Vous voulez déguster? You want to yes. try? That was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> And what kind of dishes would you usually pair it with with that in mind? Bah, se marie très bien avec tout ça. Il y a aussi euh, comme les poissons, des plats légers, des salades, euh, même de la viande assez légère, un petit peu comme du veau ou euh, du poulet, quoi, de la volaille. Et... Mm. Donc là, on est sur 90% de, de Syrah, 10% de Vermentino. Et là, c'est uniquement donc les, euh, les jus, on va dire de la toute première presse. Ça serait trop compliqué à assembler après avec un tout petit volume. Je préfère vraiment uniquement garder de la qualité. And I did have a little sip while you were talking, and it's, it's a beautiful way to start the day. <laughs> When I asked Lise what produce she was most excited about before moving to the region, cheese was at the top of her list. So our final stop of the day had to be a dash over to meet a hugely popular local goat cheese maker, Marianne, whose amazing cheese completely converted me. Thankfully, we got there in time and she hadn't sold out yet. Are these in uh, ash? Vegetable it. carbon. Originally, ash was used from fireplace. It's used to help prevent oxidization. Mm -hmm. We should get a few different cheeses now, though. Yes. <laughs> Before yeah. they're gone. Yeah, absolutely. Sera-t-il possible de prendre un de celles-ci? Oui. Un de oui et un demi sec et un sec. On les sec là, ils sont un petit peu un petit peu costauds. Ouais, ça pique, ça pique bien. Des fois, c'est bien de mettre dans une salade râpée. Ah oui. Ça relève un peu la. C'est une très bonne idée. Voilà. Un pavé cendré. Ça, c'est très très bon. Les pavés cendrés, c'est il y a une subtilité dans le dans le goût avec la cendre. C'est l'affinage un petit peu différent. Moi, j'aime beaucoup. Oui. Super. Et puis un de celles-ci avec les tomates. Oui. We can't leave without trying the famous one. Famous one. Clearly, going to the market doesn't just mean filling up your baskets. 
I remember something that Lee's mentioned to me, that of course it's the farmers themselves that have the best ideas for how to treat their products, even with her training as a chef. I mean, it makes sense. So once we got back, what did we do with the tomatoes? We did just what Julianne suggested. We ate them raw, sliced on a plate with olive oil, salt, and basil. Simple, which as Eric told us, is the way to go when you have good produce. Next time, we'll be back in Berlin with Lise to show you how to make a recipe inspired by Provence, no matter where in the world your kitchen is. But only if you promise to go to the market first. Mm -hmm.